Hello everyone and welcome to this new topic on data frame fundamentals. If you guys recall in the previous couple of notebooks we have been able to learn the foundations of pandas series and if you guys recall simply a pandas series was one dimensional. A data frame is multi-dimensional and that's the fun piece okay. So what I'm going to go first is I'm going to cover how to define a pandas data frame today and let's go ahead and cover that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to import pandas first. So I'm going to say import pandas as pd. If you press shift and enter that will simply execute or run this cell. And please note that we are right now in pandas data frame fundamentals skeleton. And if you guys go in here, here I have the solution notebook. So here I have pandas data frame fundamental solutions notebook. Okay. All right. And please note that this notebook is quite extensive. Actually, if you scroll down, you should be able to see there are a ton of information that we're going to be covering. Uh, actually, we are going, we have 14 sections in here. And as always, at the end of the notebook, I've included several mini challenges along the way, along with their mini challenges solution. So for every single section out of the 14 section, we're going to have 14 mini challenges. Okay, so let's go ahead and define a two-dimensional pandas data frame. And what we're going to do is that we're going to create a pandas data frame from a Python dictionary. We have actually have done that before in the previous notebook, but we have been able to define a pandas series from a Python dictionary. Now I want to define a pandas data frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So I'm going to say the following. I'm going to assume that I have, um, that I work at a bank and I have a couple of clients. Maybe I have four clients at the bank. And I wanted to create a data frame that contains multiple features about these customers. The first feature will be the bank client ID. The second one will be the bank client name. They're essentially first and last names. The third one will be their net worth, like how much money do they have essentially. And then the fourth element will be the years with bank. How long have they been with the bank? What's their tenure with the bank? So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to call the pandas data frame bank client DF. So I'm going to say bank underscore client underscore df equals to. I'm going to use pandas data frame constructor method to build our data frame. So if you guys recall, before I used pd.series, if you guys remember, okay, but that was to build the series. Right now I want to build a data frame. Well, you, you, you write data frame. And, you, and again, you press tab, that should auto-complete for you. You open parentheses. And then I wanted to define a dictionary inside these parentheses. So I'm going to open curly braces. And here we go. Within the dictionary, I'm going to add key value pairs. So the first key will be bank client ID. And then I'm going to add colon. And because right now I'm going to include more than one element within the bank client ID column, I'm going to provide them in a list format. And here are the IDs. So the first bank client ID, I'm going to give it, let's say, 111. The second bank client ID, I'm going to call it 222 for the second customer, I mean. For the third customer, their ID is 333. And then the fourth one, their ID is 444. And then after the square bracket, I'm going to add a comma, press enter, and here we go. Now I'm going to add the second key value pair. The second one will be bank client name, colon, open square brackets, and let's provide the names for my various customers. The first customer, let's say her, her name is Laila, for example, Ali, you, can, you guys can call it anything you want, comma, and then maybe let's say Kate, Steve, and then maybe uh, Francis, Morris, okay, and actually before that, just to stay, um, to match the solution notebook, 
Maybe let's say go with Nicole Mitch, for example. Okay. And then Francis Morris. All right, perfect. After the square bracket, you add comma, and then you add the next one. And the next one will be my net worth in dollar values. You add colon, and then you add you open square brackets, and then you write the following. $35,000, followed by $3,000, followed by $100,000, and then finally $2,000. After that, you add comma, and then you do the following. You add years with bank. And then you add colon, and then the first customer has been with the bank for four years. The second one has been with the bank for seven years. Third one is 10 years. And then finally, which is Francis, has been with the bank for 15 years, for example. So basically, Francis Morris here, Francis Morris has a client ID of 444, and his net worth is $2,000. However, he has been with the bank for 15 years, okay? The data doesn't make much sense, I would say, because it's like, you know, he has been with the bank for 15 years. We should expect that his net worth could be much higher, but maybe, you know, like he has, like he's banking with a different, for example, bank as an example. Don't worry about that for now. So I'm going to go ahead and say bank client underscore DF. If you press shift and enter, here we go. Congratulations. Now you have been able to create your first pandas data frame. All right. So what you guys can see here, here I have essentially a table. And if you guys recall as well, is that you can tell that this is a pandas data frame and not a pandas series because it can be shown here in a, in a rich formatting, right? If you guys recall, pandas series didn't have rich formatting, but here with pandas data frame, you can tell right away once you visualize the data frame that you have rich formatting, as you guys can see here, and essentially, we have four columns, and here we have four customers. So it's essentially four columns by four rows in here. The indices are 0, 1, 2, 3, and the client ID is 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4. That's their client names, their net worth, and their years with bank as well. Okay, what if I wanted maybe to obtain the data type for my bank client DF? Let's see if it's a pandas data frame or not, or I'm making stuff up. So I'm going to say type. Could you please show me the type of my bank client DF. Again, tab should auto complete. Shift and enter. Here we go. The data type is pandas.core.frame.data frame. So now the data frame, essentially, uh, this is the data type, which is great. Next, what if I wanted to maybe view the first couple of rows in my data frame? Well, you can say go to my bank client df dot head and if you open parentheses and maybe you list you list number two here we go what what i can see right now is i was able to still um it's still loading but essentially if you guys remember we have done that before is that the head method and the tail method could be used to visualize the first couple of rows or the last couple of rows in my data frame all right so basically, when you execute the cell here, you should be able to see that you uh, have been able to visualize the first two rows in my data frame. And of course, if you change that number maybe to three, shift and enter, you should be able to see the first three rows in your data frame. Okay, what if I wanted to show the last maybe row in my data frame? I can say bank client df dot tail, you open parentheses, and then maybe you say one. And that will simply is going to show you the last element within the data frame and here we go what you guys can see here i was able to visualize the last row in my data frame and this is the last row in here all right okay next what i could do as well is i can go ahead and get the shape of the data frame indicating how many rows and how many columns in my data frame so if i say bank client df and if I say dot shape, this is simply an attribute. If you press shift and enter, here we go. The feedback is four by four, which makes sense because if you guys go up here, I have four rows from index zero up until index three. And here I have four columns, bank client ID, their name, their net worth, and the years with bank. Okay. And what if I wanted to maybe get the data frame info? 
So you can go ahead and use what we call it the info method. And I personally use the info method quite extensively whenever I'm building any um, data science project because it can give me a lot of information about the data frame. What's the data type for every single column in my data frame? What is, uh, do we have any null elements, for example, in my data frame or not? What is the memory usage? And let me go ahead and show you what do I mean by that. So if I say bank client DF, again, tab should autocomplete. If I say dot info and you open parentheses and you press shift and enter, here we go. What you guys get here is simply an information about your data frame. For example, it's telling you that here I have the data columns. I have in total four columns. Here are the four columns, right? Here I have the non-null count. So I have four non-null elements. Basically, what, it's, what does that tell you is that we don't have any null elements. We don't have any missing data, which makes sense because if you guys go up here, every single cell here in my table has content, has information. So we don't have any null elements. We are going to later on in this notebook, we'll learn about null elements and what we're gonna do or deal with. Let's say if, if I don't have, for example, the net worth for Kate, what I'm gonna do. We're gonna learn about it uh, later um, in this notebook. What I can also infer from here is, well, the data type. Well, it's telling you that here I have int 64, in 64, in 64 stands for integer 64. And for the bank client ID, that's the only one that is object uh, data type. And finally, I can also see the memory usage indicating it's 256 bytes in memory. All right, so that's simply all I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And of course, before we conclude, I'm going to introduce you guys to many challenge number one. And I'm going to ask you guys to please pause the video and attempt to solve the mini challenge on your own. So here is a mini challenge. A portfolio contains a collection of securities such as stocks, bonds, and ETFs. So for example, if you are an investor, let's say maybe if you wanna invest your retirement money, for example, you can invest your money, which is we call it securities in stocks. So you are getting essentially a share um, in a company such as let's say Apple or Google, you can buy bonds. Okay, this is form of, of debt, essentially. So you can buy bonds kind of you're lending money to a given company, and then the company can pay you basically um, uh, interest on the money that you lent. Or you can buy ETFs, or what we call them ex exchange traded funds. These are essentially a mix of securities like a bunch of stocks and maybe bonds as well. Uh, don't worry about it in, in, uh, in details. Just let's assume that right now what I want you guys to do is to define a data frame. We're going to call that data frame portfolio DF. And that data frame will hold three different stock ticker symbols. So we're going to include three ticker symbols. I want to include the number of shares. You guys can assume any values or any numbers you want. And also the price per share. Okay. And again, feel free to select any price. And I want you also guys to calculate the total value of the portfolio, including all stocks. This might be quite challenging, but again, go ahead, stretch your limits, give it a shot, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.